For non-Muslims especially, Eid is commonly viewed as the Muslim version of Christmas. Although certain elements might be similar between the two prior mentioned holidays, it's important to know that there are in fact two Eids for Muslims and they are very different in many ways. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode here on FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and in this episode, I'll be sharing facts about the differences between the two Eids in Islam, Eid al-Futr and Eid al-Adha. Okay, so with that said, let's jump in at number 10, we have the number of days. So Eid al-Futr is celebrated for one to three days depending on the country and Eid al-Adha is typically a four day long holiday with celebrations lasting until the 13th of the month Dhul al-Hijjah. The difference at number nine has to do with the name meanings. So just to clarify once again, Eid al-Fatah means the festival of the breaking of the fast and Eid al hadha means the feast of sacrifice. So yeah, of course, two different Eids definitely will have two different meanings. Now for number eight, let's look more into sacrifice. Eid al hadha commemorates Prophet Ibrahim's willingness to give up his beloved son at Allah's command. It is recounted in the Quran that Allah appeared to Prophet Ibrahim in a dream and commanded him to sacrifice his most dearest possession as an act of obedience and submission. So Ibrahim, also known as Abraham, he blindfolded his son Ismail according to Islam and Ismail readily agreed to the sacrifice. However, Allah sent an animal to be sacrificed instead. And since the time of Prophet Muhammad, Muslims have sacrificed animals on the day to honor Ibrahim's spirit of sacrifice and obedience to God. On the other hand, Eid al-Fitr does not require any animals to be sacrificed, but Muslims are obligated to pay their zakat before the Eid prayers, which marks the end of the month of Ramadan. Moving on to number seven, we're gonna look more into the fasting aspect. So Eid al-Fitr is celebrated after the month of Ramadan, which is the month of fasting. As for Eid al-Adha, Muslims are encouraged to fast on Eid Eve or the day of Arafat, but not the entire month. That day commemorates the finality of the religion of Islam and of divine revelation. Islam teaches Muslims to view the day of Arafat as a day of gratitude, hence, the celebration of Eid the day after. It's also a day of immense forgiveness with an opportunity for great reward. And that's why Muslims fast that day seeking forgiveness and mercy from Allah. Next up, number six, eating habits. Eid al-Adha is known as the salty Eid because of the larger variety, especially of savory dishes when compared to those served during Eid al-Fitr, where sweeter foods are used to bring Break the fast, but food includes beef or mutton, depending on the animal slaughtered in the house. Then the presents offered to friends, relatives, and the poor include meat of the slaughtered animal. The fried liver of the animal is used for breakfast, and the different dishes include different varieties of kebabs, halim, korma, rice dishes, as well as other various different foods. Halfway in at number five, we have the reason behind both Eids. This one is very important, so listen up. After a month of prayer, devotion, and self-control, Muslims celebrate the accomplishment of their sacred duties during Ramadan with the beginning of Eid al-Fitr or the festival of breaking the fast. A whole lot of food and family and gifts happen during this time. Now Eid al-Adha is about giving up something that you hold dear in devotion to God. And that's why Muslims sacrifice an animal. It's also mandatory to share the sacrificed animal's meat in three equal parts for yourself, for your family and friends and for the poor. Now the Quran states this and I quote, and the camels and the cattle we have appointed for you as among the symbols of Allah. For you therein is good. So mention the name of Allah upon them when lined up for sacrifice and when they are lifeless on their sides. Thus have we subjected them to you that you may be grateful. Their meat will not reach Allah, nor will their blood, but what reaches him is piety from you. And that passage I just quoted is taken from Surah 22 verses 36 to 37 in the Quran. Now moving on to number four, Hajj or Islamic 
pilgrimage. Eid al-Adha is celebrated on the third day of Hajj and lasts for around three days. Hajj is a pilgrimage made to the Kaaba, which is the house of God in the sacred city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Now the rites of pilgrimage are performed over five to six days, extending from the 8th to the 12th or 13th of the month Dhul al-Hijjah. Now, when it comes to Eid al-Fitr, Muslims do not perform Hajj, but some Muslims, they may undertake an Umrah, which is a lesser pilgrimage to Mecca during Eid, but this is not a substitute for Hajj. For number three, let's look at the time. Eid al-Fitr marks the end of the month-long dawn to sunset fasting of Ramadan. It falls on the first day of Shawwal in the Islamic calendar, and this does not always fall on the same Gregorian calendar day as because the start of the lunar month varies based on when the moon is sighted by local religious authorities. Now in the Islamic lunar calendar, Eid al-Adha falls on the 10th day of the Al-Hijjah, which is a little over two months after Eid al-Futr. Now in the international Gregorian calendar, the dates vary from year to year, shifting approximately 11 days earlier every single year that goes by. The next difference has to do with the pillars of Islam. So Psalm or fasting during the holy month of Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam. As ordained in the Quran, the fast is an act of deep personal worship in which Muslims seek a richer perception of God. On the other hand, Hajj, which happens during Eid, is the fifth pillar and the most significant manifestation of Islamic unity in the entire world. The difference is that fasting is obligatory for any Muslim who is physically able to fast. But as for Hajj, it's only for Muslims who are physically and financially able to make the journey to Mecca. Hajj is to be performed at least once in the lifetime and it's not annually. So yeah, that's one of the big differences here. Now we end off at number one. Let's look at the importance really quick. Although Eid al fitr is generally more popular because, you know, a lot of non-Muslims, they look at this as the Christmas of the Muslims. So it's very popular for non-Muslims to perceive it that way. However, Eid al-Adha is regarded as the holier of the two Eids because of the history associated with it. And with that said, guys, this brings us to the end of this episode. This was a brief look at 10 of the differences between Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Really hope this episode helped to clarify some misconceptions or maybe add to your knowledge if you didn't know any of this. As always, I want to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Thanks for hanging out with me in another episode, guys. If you did enjoy this one, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up and also subscribe if this is your first time here to the channel. That way you'll be notified when we post our daily videos here on FTD Facts. All right, guys, until next time, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you soon.